Good morning, everyone. Good to see you. Can you hear me okay? Awesome. Well, I, I am uh, Allie's husband. That's kind of how I'm, I'm usually uh, introduced. I appreciate very much the uh, invitation to uh, be here today. It's a great honor. Uh, I'm excited to share with you uh, what God has laid on my heart uh, for the AV at uh, this time. But I wanted to tell you a little bit about me. Um, all you know is I'm Allie's John. That's it. I'm originally from Oklahoma. Any Okies out there? Whoa, we got like one. Cool. Awesome. Hi. We're like best buds already. Um, and then God called me to Texas to go to seminary. Any Texans out there? I'm sorry. You know, t Texas is like the mean big brother to Okies. Isn't that right? Yeah, so I've chosen to be the bratty little brother to Texans. Uh, that's how I live. And then God called me from a seminary. That's what I was doing in Texas. He called me down to the Caymans in, in, uh, for several years. Any Caymanians here? I didn't think so. Why, why leave the Caymans and come to Florida when you have all that? And, and then it got really weird. In November of 2001, God called me from the Caymans to Michigan. November. November. And so I've been there ever since then, and, and I'm still wondering what I did wrong, you know. And then Allie and I got married, and she's wondering what she did wrong. So we're kind of in that, sorry, Lord, I don't know what. Aren't you glad God's not like that? Amen? You know, God, God is not like, uh, you know, looking around, trying to catch us doing something wrong so he can zap us. Right? Oh, saw that. Gotcha. He's not that way. God is in the, as, as we heard here, you hear a lot, the radical renewal business. Isn't that cool? You know, yes, God, God is holy, which means he can't tolerate sin. God is holy. But he's also just, which means he, he must punish the sinner, and I'm in that group. But you know what? He's also love. Which means his, his heart for us is to, is to love us and redeem us and adopt us as his own children and, and give us a new identity and, and give us the promise of life abundant and, and eternal. And all that comes together at the cross. At the cross, you see the intersection of God's holiness and justice and his love. As, as Jesus was on the cross, all the sin of all man was, was on him. He, he bore our sin, and not only our sin, he... He bore the wrath that you and I deserved. And then he, he died and rose again, conquered sin and death, that we might be forgiven and reconciled to the Father. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? So the business that Jesus is in is, is uh, that, that redemption, that radical redemption of people who are, who are broken and captured by, by sin and Satan and this world. He's out there to, to pull us out of that and bring us into the sweet fellowship that we can have. Um, with the Father. And I'm so glad this church believes that. When, when Allie and I started dating, I had to do some spiritual reconnaissance, okay? I'm like, okay, who is this person? What is a Presbyterian anyway? You guys were kind of Presbyterian at that time. And, and, uh, and my image of, of Presbyterians was pretty, you know, uh, I don't know, the frozen chosen. That's kind, of, that's kind of the stereotype we have. And so I'm looking at the Avenue website. I was studying it. I probably knew it better than most staff knew at that time. I'm like, looking at every, dissecting every word, and I come across this video entitled, What is the Gospel? I mean, you guys remember that, that video. Great video, and, and two things caught my attention right away. Number one, Allie really likes to talk with her hands. That, that's the first thing that caught my eye. I was like, whoa, she's like all over the place. Second thing that caught my eye is how much this church understands and gets the gospel. And so, uh, you're blessed to be a part of this church, whether you're a member, whether you, you know, just showed up today, um, you're in the right place. You're in the right place, and I encourage you to stay here and, and get rooted and uh, planted here. So, so today, um, I'm entering into the series that, that you guys are in about, you know, expecting greater things, and I'm excited about, about doing so. And so, um, I'm going to talk a, a lot about the Holy Spirit and a lot about evangelism, which you've been hearing 
um, about in the last several weeks. And some of what I share might be review and, and hopefully it'll reinforce um, what God is already, you know, teaching you and building into your life. And some will be fresh as well. And I hope that'll help, you know, add more dimensions to your understanding of the Holy Spirit and, and your role. Um, if you're a Christian in the life, in, in, in the mission of God, and if you're, if you're not a Christian, if you're here today and you have not yet come to faith in Christ, this will give you some understanding as to what God is doing in your life and, and what you're doing here. So our scripture today is John chapter 3. We're going to camp out in John 3 and then jump uh, to a couple places. And if you have your Bibles, I encourage you to use it. Uh, if not, all the scripture is going to be up here. And also there's a place to take notes on the, the back of your uh, bulletin. I'm, I'm big on uh, using notes because I'm so forgetful. So if you're, if you're a note taker, that'll, that'll help you there. So John chapter 3, the title of the message is A Beautiful Work of God. A Beautiful Work of God. That's the big title, and I think the, the first point was up here a second ago, but we'll get to that in a second. So John 3, everybody there? You guys ready? All right, let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask him to speak to us uh, loudly um, today. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity to, to come together as a, a community, a family, and uh, worship you. Lord, we thank you for the presence of your spirit here. We thank you for Jesus and the gospel. And Lord, we thank you for your word, which so clearly and faithfully and, and truthfully reveals to us your, your will and your wisdom for life. I pray that today that you would speak through your word and by your Holy Spirit. Lord, help me get out of the way so that, that all that comes out is, is um, all that is conveyed is from you. It's our desire that you be glorified. Lord, open our ears, our minds, and our hearts. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs> all right, the first big point today is, is Jesus' relentless pursuit. Jesus' relentless pursuit. Let's jump on into the scripture. John chapter 3, 1 through 3 says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. He was a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus at night, or by night, and said to him, Rabbi, that means teacher, we know that you are a, a teacher come from God, for no one can do these things that you do unless God is with him. And Jesus answered him and said, Truly, truly, I say to you, Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So let's, let's camp here for a little bit. I like to call this episode Nick at Night. Any old Nickelodeon fans? Okay. Nick is a religious leader, a really good guy, just a decent guy, kind of prominent in society. And uh, he hears about this Jesus who had just begun his public ministry. Jesus had been out there just, just a little bit. He'd called his first disciples. Um, he performed some miracles, including turning water into wine, or if you're a Baptist, it was grape juice, any Baptists here, former Baptists, just a few, I'm, I'm Baptist, but yeah, we got, we got some, and he also, uh, he cleansed the temple, so his fame was spreading, and so Nick comes to him at night and asks him this question, he says, man, you're something special, because no one can do what you're doing unless they're really from God, that's a big compliment, isn't it? You know, Casey, don't you like it when someone comes and says that to you? It's like, you're all that and, you know, a bag of holy water. You're, you're awesome, right? Um, I would have eaten it up. It's like, yeah, thanks for noticing. I've really, you know, doing my best to serve the Lord. But what does Jesus say? He ignores it. And he jumps to what he says in verse 3. Look at what he says in verse 3. Truly, truly, I, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Why did Jesus go so quickly to that? You ever had a conversation with someone and they, they don't seem to track well? We, we have that all the time now in our home. It's like, you're not listening? No, I'm looking at the babies. Or, you know, it's just, well, they don't track well. Or you have a conversation with someone and immediately they jump to the matters of your heart. And you're like, I'm not going to spend time with them anymore. Right? <laughs> Look what Jesus does. Instantly, he like jumps to listen. If you want to spend eternity with God, if you want to be in God's kingdom, you need to be born again. Why did Jesus do that? 
Well, this shows his relentless pursuit. What matters most to Jesus, and this is still true today, what matters most to Jesus is where you and I stand with the Father. More than anything else, Jesus wants to make sure that, that, that you and I come into relationship with the Father through him so that we too will be citizens of God's kingdom and spend eternity with him. That, that's his relentless pursuit, and we see that here. So here's the first big takeaway, if, if you're taking notes. Bring up the screen. Thank you. Very, this is awesome. I love the telestrator. I've never used a telestrator before. This is cool. So his relentless pursuit. Number one, Jesus is pursuing you. Jesus is pursuing you. How many of you have been caught by Jesus? You can say that, that uh, you know, he's, he's grabbed hold of your heart. He's come into your life. He's remade you. How many of you can say that? All right. How many of you, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand on this next one. Maybe just raise an eyebrow or something. You know. How many of you can say that, you know, he hasn't caught me yet, but he's working on me. <laughs> he's, strange stuff is going on in here. He's working on me. Just raise your eyebrow. All right. I see that eyebrow. Very, very good. How many of you would say, and this one deserves maybe an eye roll, how many of you are playing hard to get? Right. You know, that's okay. Because the Bible teaches that God is patient. He's patient. But he is pursuing you. <laughs> and, and he will get you. All right? <laughs> and so keep coming, keep showing up, keep asking questions, keep hearing the gospel. But know that Jesus is pursuing you. Amen? And, and let me just throw this in. He's also pursuing your loved ones and your friends that you're concerned about. And, and you can rest in, in knowing that. So let's go to big takeaway number two. This is, gets kind of scary here, okay? Jesus calls you to join him. In this pursuit, okay? He calls you to join him on his mission by doing the greater works of evangelism and discipleship. Evangelism, by, what we mean by that is, you know, telling others about Jesus. It's from the word good news, telling others the good news of the gospel of Jesus. Discipleship is about helping others love and know and follow Jesus like you do. If you know Jesus, if you've met Jesus, if he's captured you and touched your heart... He calls you to this. Is that crazy or what? That's awesome, though, isn't it? To be a part of that, the greatest mission the world has ever known. How many of you think that's awesome? How many of you think that's scary? Yeah. That's crazy. You know, when I think of great missions, I think of, like, uh, you know, storming the beaches at Normandy. That's a great mission, right? I, I, think of, uh, I think of Apollo 11 landing on the moon with Neil and Buzz. It's a great mission, right? I, I think of, I, here's a new one, dear. I think of us getting out of the house without spit up on our clothing on Sunday morning, right? That, that's a great mission. I think, I think of the Avengers going after Thanos. You know, that's a great mission. Listen, the greatest mission the world has ever known is the mission of Christ. And he's called you and me to join him on that mission. If you're a follower of Jesus, he says to you, I want you to, to be my witnesses. I want you to make disciples of all nations. I, I want you to, as we'll see in a moment here, do the greater things. Do the greater things. So again, if, if you're like me, that's really intimidating. I'm, I, I, this may seem contrary to to, uh, you know, what I'm doing now, but I'm really shy. You know, Allie's the loud, boisterous one, right? In a good way, right? I'm, I'm the shy wallflower. I'm the introvert. Any introverts here? You, you, know what, you know what introvert's favorite party is? The one that's canceled. <laughs> it, it's like, praise God, I don't have to go. They canceled it, Right? You know, that, that's who I am. And so the thought of me being a part of that, I'm like, 
I can't do that. Just give me an office in a corner and leave me alone. But if you're a follower of Christ, that's what you're called to. And so at this time, I wanted to go to the, the scripture you've been looking at as your kind of theme verses for, for uh, your vision. I think that's next. Let's pull those up. Yeah, yeah, John 14. When, when Casey told me that uh, he was teaching on this, I was like, this is like my favorite passage. I teach on it every year in, in, in some form in, in our church. But let's, let's kind of walk through this together and, and, and relay the found, uh, foundation for vision here. This is Jesus talking. He says, I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. So what, what was Jesus doing? Well, he was doing things like, you know, great miracles, you know, feeding the 5,000, you know, healing diseases, casting out demons. He was doing all those things. And now I come from a tradition we don't exactly do those things, all right? But he was doing those things for the purpose of people coming to know and love and follow Jesus. That was the purpose of all those things. And, and I tell you what, if I, if I encounter someone who's demon-possessed, um, two thing, one of two things are going to happen. I'm either going to run away. I mean, I've seen the movies, right? Or I'm going to pray for that person. Pray against that demon. That they will be set free and they will come to know and love Jesus. As I know and love Jesus. So all the greater works, whatever... They're going to be, they're up to him, but they all serve the greater purpose of bringing people to know and love Jesus, right? So we're called to be a part of that. Look at the next verse, verse 13. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. This is the, one of the most powerful prayer promises in all of Scripture. And it, it's, it's not about, uh, you know, some people twist that and say, all right, if you ask for, a, you know, a Maserati in Jesus' name, you're going to get it. it. It's not about that. This is about praying for the greater works to be done. That the Father might be glorified through the Son. One of the primary reasons he gave us prayers for this purpose. And then the next verses... Let's go ahead and jump to the next screen. If, if you love me, you will obey what I command, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. That's the Spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. That's the Holy Spirit. And as one of the primary reasons we have prayer is that we might pray for the greater things to be done, one of the primary reasons we have the Holy Spirit is that the greater things might be done. Is this making sense? Let me put it in a, in a takeaway and kind of capture everything here. Next screen, please. So this is your big takeaway, number three. To accomplish the greater works, Jesus provides the greatest resources. To accomplish the greater works, Jesus provides the greatest resources. First one is prayer. And look at this definition of prayer. Prayer is us asking God to do what only God can do. S soak in that for a little bit. Prayer is you and me asking God to do what only God can do. And only God can do the greater works. And the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God doing what only God can do. Make sense? So if you think that there is no way you can, you can step into this, expect greater things, vision, and there's no way you can do the, the greater works, and there's no way you can, can share your faith and make disciples, if you think there's no way you can do that, then you're in a really good place because you can't do it. You can't without prayer and without the Holy Spirit. And so we who are, are followers of Christ, we, you know, you know we, we can organize God right out of stuff, you know? 
we need to learn and relearn and relearn again that, that all that we do, we, it must be saturated in prayer, fully relying upon God and, and, and empowered and motivated and guided and directed by the Holy Spirit. And as we step into that, we're going to see more of the greater works. And as we step into that, guess what? Greater expectations <laughs> for those greater works to be done. All right, you tracking with me so far? All right, let me catch up in my notes here. Uh, all right, let's jump on to point number two. Let's talk about the Holy Spirit. It's kind of been a theme of, of uh, um, this, this series you're in. Let's talk about the Holy Spirit's relentless pursuit. Uh, back to John chapter 3. Back to John chapter 3. Jesus answered, Nicodemus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? That's a great question. Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I, I say to you, unless one is born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That's natural birth. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. That's supernatural rebirth. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Jesus is referring here to the work of the Holy Spirit in a person's life when when they become a Christian, and just just quickly, we believe is we're, we're we believe in the Trinity as as Christians. We believe that yes, there there is one God, but He's also in three persons: God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And it, it, kind of mind blowing, you know. I still the more I think about it, you know, it's, it's like scrambled up here. It's like what? But that's what the Bible teaches. And so, this is about the Holy Spirit. And so, when a person comes to faith in Jesus and they are radically renewed it's all a work of the Holy Spirit it, it's not a decision we make although we you know we step into that we 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 act on that we we believe but ultimately it's it's a work of the Holy Spirit in the life of the person who comes to faith in in Jesus Christ and and Jesus compares the Holy Spirit to wind. Did you catch that? He compares the Holy Spirit to wind. And I really like that because guess what spirit means? Wind. In both the Old Testament Hebrew, the word is ruach. In the New Testament Greek, the word is pneuma. I think pneumatics or pneumonia. I don't think pneumonia. That's, that's, not, that's not the takeaway. You know, <laughs> But both Old Testament and New Testament, the main word for the third member of the Trinity is wind or breath. So think about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is, is the wind or, or the breath of God. The Holy Spirit is the presence and the activity of God in this world now, blowing, stirring, moving. I, I was sitting out in the car in the parking lot praying this morning and you know, all of a sudden a, a, a leaf, a dead leaf blew across the front. I'm pretty confident the dead leaf did not say, hey, I'm going to jump up and blow across the front of the car. The wind caught that leaf, lifted it out, and moved it. That's like the Holy Spirit in our world, the presence and the activity of God blowing and, and stirring and moving. The, you know, the Holy Spirit is not, you know, God up, up in heaven, you know, sitting there. The Holy Spirit is, is God here, very present, very active in our midst. And, and so think about that even here and now. Guys, God's here. 
God is here. The Holy Spirit is here. Blowing, stirring, moving. And, and right now, he, he might be like drawing you to him, himself, drawing you to the Father. You're like, what's, what's going on here? You know, it's, that's the Spirit. He might be convicting you, we'll read this in a moment, he might be convicting you of sin in your life. That's, that's the Spirit of God. Not just my words, you know, my, my words fail, but the Spirit of God takes those and speaks sometimes through what we say, sometimes in spite of what we say. That's the work of, of the Holy Spirit today. A couple of examples from Scripture, John 20, 22, when when Jesus first introduces the Holy Spirit to his closest followers, do you remember what he did? He blows on them <laughs> and says, receive the Holy Spirit. The wind, the breath of God. In Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit is, is poured out on the church, it's, it was, the Bible says it was like a violent wind blowing among all the, the new believers in Jesus, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. So as you think about the Holy Spirit, think about wind and breath and movement, stirring of God in this world. So let me give you a couple takeaways here, what this means when it comes to our sharing with others about Jesus, our evangelism. Here, here's the first one, number four. <clears throat> when, when we speak to others about Jesus, the Holy Spirit is speaking to more powerfully more effectively. Now, how many, let's just be honest here. How many of you are timid about sharing your faith with others? Just be honest, right? This is great encouragement for me. When we tell others about Jesus, we can know, because the Bible says so, we can know that the Holy Spirit is speaking too. Only better, all right? <laughs> more powerfully more effectively. Let's look at John 16. John 16, this is Jesus uh, talking to his closest followers the, the night before his crucifixion. Look at what he says. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the Helper, the Holy Spirit, will not come to you. If I go, I will send him to you, and when he comes, here's what he's going to do. He will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment concerning sin because they do not believe in me concerning righteousness because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer concerning judgment because the ruler of this world is judged so let's, let's think about this let's think about when when we when we speak how do we make sound how does sound how do words come out well first you know the diaphragm compresses right and and air comes out of our lungs, it, it, it makes our vocal cords vibrate, and then we use our mouth to form words. But it starts with air. And, and so when we, when we share Jesus with someone, and we're, and we're talking to someone about their, their sin and brokenness and their need for a, a Savior, the Holy Spirit is speaking far better than we can speak, but he's speaking too. As we speak to their ears, and hopefully it gets in here and here, the Holy Spirit speaks at a much deeper level the essential truths of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, and so here's a really cool thing, back to introverts. Um, this is encouraging because you know, you know, introverts don't often like to have, you know, conversations. The, the encouragement here is that God's doing most of the talking anyway. <laughs> so that frees us to speak about Jesus without that self-consciousness and without that worry of saying the right thing and in the right way. So big takeaway number five, when we... There we go. When we speak to others about Jesus, only, get this, only the Holy Spirit can change their heart and bring them to faith in Christ. That's what Jesus is talking about when, he's, when, he's, uh, when he uses the expression born again. Theologians have a couple words they, they use in, in this area of the Spirit's work. One is regeneration. That means to be born again, the, 
a new heart, the heart is changed. The, the other word is conversion. Um, that's like you know, turning from sin and trusting in Jesus. It's, it's all a work of the Spirit of God. <laughs> So when we share our faith with someone, and on those beautiful occasions when they, when they come to Jesus and they're, and, and they're radically renewed, that's, that's, God did that. He used our words. He used our testimony. He used the gospel. And we need to clearly share the gospel and correctly share the gospel. He used all that. But it's his spirit that made it real and life-changing to the person. So let, let's think again about the Holy Spirit as, as breath. Let's, let's say that uh, suddenly I collapsed up here. Just fell down. What's the first thing you would do? Number one, there you go. Number one, you'd pray, all right? As you're praying, someone called 911, all right? Everybody know the number to 911? Okay, good. We're, and, and as you're praying and someone is calling 911, somebody better come up here and check on me, okay? And what's the first thing you're going to check when you come up here to see if I'm breathing? Why? Because breath equals life. Breath equals life. When, when God formed Adam of, of the dust of the earth, he was a lifeless being. It was not until that God breathed into his nostrils that he became a living soul. Breath equals life. Only God can bring the dead to life. And he does that by his Holy Spirit. Amen? How many of you guys have experienced that? God did that. Yeah, give the Lord a hand. God did that. I, I used to think, um, how many of you guys have been trained in, like, different evangelism approaches? You know, any, anyone, like, evangelism explosion back in the day. It was a big, started in South Florida. Um, I used to do, you know, been, I've been trained in a lot of those. And, and, and you know, one, one of the not-so-good things about, about those approaches, and I, I encourage you to be trained in how to share your faith, but here's one of my takeaways, which was probably not intentional, but I kind of, you know, learned from that that it's, it's my responsibility to make sure someone gets born again. And if, if, they don't, if they don't come to faith in Jesus or if they don't say a prayer with me, then I failed. I failed. Either I, I said the wrong thing or I wasn't winsome enough or they just didn't like me. <laughs> but that's not the case. Yes, we must present the gospel clearly, completely. Yes, we need to ask people to respond. But ultimately, the Holy Spirit is the one who does the work. Amen. Is that clicking? So let me uh, give you a, a story. Let me share a story, one of my favorite, favorite stories. Many years ago, a, uh, a man... Uh, called me. I'd done a funeral for his, for his mom. I'd never met him until the funeral and planning for that. He said, you know, I want to make an appointment with you. I have some questions to ask you. And so I said, sure, come on in. So he showed up in my office and, and had a legal pad and at least three or four or five pages of questions on this legal pad. I wasn't prepared for that. It was a really long appointment. Um, I forgot most of the questions, um, but the ones I remember, uh, one was, uh, why do bad things happen? You know, why is there evil in this world? That's a great question. And so I just shared my ignorance, you know. Another question is, okay, God created everything. Who created God? <laughs> that was fun. That was fun. Uh, a uh, third question that I remember was, uh, do pets go to heaven? You know, and at that time I said no, but, you know, we have such an awesome dog, yet I hope I'm wrong. You know, I was like, Benny, Benny is the wonder dog. She's got to go to heaven. Um, you can sort that out later, Casey, with the congregation. Okay. Um, but after we got through all the questions, the very last question, he said, you know, I hear people talking about having a personal relationship with God. That's something that I think I'd like. 
How can I have a personal relationship with God? If that's not the Holy Spirit moving in someone's life, I don't know what is. Right? And so I, I got to share Jesus with them. And, and there in my office in Michigan, I, I got to see this guy come from death to life. All of God. All of God. This guy came into the office dead. He left more alive than ever. It was a beautiful thing. And then about three years later, he died. Age 51, he died. And I was able to share at his funeral with his family that, that uh, he had come to Christ and had been born again. And, and it's just a really cool story. And, and the, his, his brother is now one of our deacons at our, at our church. So you need to see how God worked in, uh, in, in all of that. So here's the, the big takeaway number six. And it, all the other takeaways build the foundation for this one. When, when we remember these truths about the Holy Spirit, we have greater courage to share the gospel. Do you see how that works? We have greater courage to share the gospel. We have greater confidence, as we do, because God's working. It's God. We have greater consolation when people say no, because it's not that they're rejecting us, Right? And we have greater celebration when they say yes because we just witnessed the greatest miracle there, there is. Someone coming from death to life by the Spirit of God through the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I, I would add this. i got to amend this for, for Casey's thing here. You know, this leads to greater expectations, doesn't it? Doesn't it? The result is greater expectations in our life for what God um, can and, and will do. So one more uh, um, main point today, number three, number three, our relentless pursuit. And I, I put a question mark there for each of us to ask the question, are we going to be like Jesus and be relentless in seeking and saving the lost? Are we going to be, you know, aware of the Holy Spirit and join him on his mission of, of essentially the same thing? Will we be those kind of people who are being his witnesses and and making disciples and seeing these greater things take place. So John chapter 3, verses 14 through 16. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. And then the verse we probably are familiar with, and now you know all the context leading up to this verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Just quickly here, Jesus refers to an incident from Numbers 21 when the, the children of God were wandering in the wilderness. Uh, they got really grumpy and they complained to God. And this is one of those times when God did go zap. He sent poisonous snakes <laughs> to uh, chastise his people and many died and and the people got the message, and they repented, and they called out to Moses, said, Moses, pray to God, so he'll stop this. So Moses prayed to God, and God said, I want you to form a bronze snake and put it on a stick, and everyone who is bitten, he can look at that snake on a stick. Kind of sounds like a, a hot dog joint, you know? Um, everyone who looks at that snake on a, a stick will be saved. So crazy story, a lot, of, a lot of crazy stuff happened in the Old Testament. But Jesus says that's really about him. And let me make this personal. I, I stand before you today as, as you know, a sinner in need of a Savior. I'm, I'm broken. I'm messed up. I know that, 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 that I have and will sin against the Lord, and I, and I know that, that my sin earns me the, the wrath of God, the just wrath of God. I'm well aware of that in my own life, and the Holy Spirit remind, has reminded and reminds me of that. But I also stand before you convinced that, that Jesus is the Son of God who came to earth, lived a perfect life, died on a cross, and as he was on the cross, my sin was all over him. 
So he died in my place for my sin, and he didn't just bear my sin. He, he endured God's wrath, the wrath that I deserved. And so the Spirit of God worked in my life to, to bring me to faith in Jesus, and he changed my heart. Whoever looks to the Son will be saved. Amen? That, that's the message. And so as, as we wind up here, and, and thank you for your patience. You guys are awesome. Um, I want you to notice how quickly Jesus gets there. He started with Nicodemus's flattery. Then he talked about the Holy Spirit. And he gets to the cross. He moves the conversation to the cross. And he does so quickly. I don't know about you, but one of the hardest things for me in, in sharing Jesus is just getting there. Anyone struggle with that? You're, you're having lunch with someone. You're sitting with a family member. You know you know they need to hear about Jesus. And, and so you're talking about the weather. You're like, i got to talk about Jesus. How am I going to talk about Jesus, you know? Getting there. And, you know, we can think of clever transitions. You know, you think it's hot here. You know, that's not a good one, you know. Um, <laughs> How do we get there? That's, not, that's a bad transition, okay? How do we get there? Well, here's, here's what I've learned, and I think some of the upcoming sermons will, you know, reinforce this. We, we need to pray. Remember, prayer is asking God to do what only he can do. Sometimes only God can get us there. So we pray. And so here's the final takeaway, kind of summarizes that. Big takeaway seven, pray for opportunities to share your faith. Pray for those opportunities and pray for the courage to embrace those opportunities. Pray for the courage to embrace those opportunities and pray for that confidence that the Holy Spirit is working through you and in those with whom you share. If you're going to pray for anything, pray for that. Courage and confidence. So you can go there. Let me, let me close with a, a story uh, about my moment of, of courage. Um, Allie and I met on Christian Mingle. If you guys are looking for a, a dating website, you know, there's one for you. Um, just drop our names. We're going to get paid. Just kidding. We're, we're not paid endorsers. Um, the time came for us to have our first conversation. How many of you have been there? That first conversation, you're like, oh, man. Okay, well, remember, I'm a shy introvert. So we, we set the time, or Allie probably set the time for the conversation. And, and uh, I'm sitting in, in my lazy boy at home, and, and uh, I'm praying, Lord, help me, you know. Um, I've, got the, I've got the number on the phone, you know, ready, ready to go. And, and I'm ready like five minutes early, you know. And I'm thinking, okay, what am I going to say when she answers? Hello, Allison. You know, what, what do you say? Or, hey there. Or, hi, Allie. Or, yeah, who is it? You know, what, what are you going to say? So I'm, and they all sound stupid. You know, it's like, this sounds really dumb. So anyway, you know, prayed up, you know, kind of prepped up. And it comes time to call. And, of course, I'm not going to call on the, on the nose. You know, that's like cray-cray. It's like, who's this creepy guy calling me? Like, like you know, 7 o'clock on the nose. So... I, I wait like 30 seconds or something, and I call, and, and uh, it rings, and it rings. This is true. Everybody needs to look at her. <laughs> and it rings, and it goes to voicemail. I'm so mad. You know, I'm like, are you kidding me? I got all that courage up. I called, I practiced, and voicemail? So, you know, the voicemail thing comes on. Of course, I'm sweet. Oh, hi, Allie. This is John. Call me back when you can. Yeah, you know, it's like, what? Well, it, obviously, we did connect later, and the rest is history. Uh, but here, here's the funny thing, and she, I have her permission to share this. By the way, I don't, I don't share stories without her, not too much, without her permission. So <coughs> she said she also was really nervous, and so she was too scared to answer the phone. 
That's probably one, definitely one of the very few times when I was more courageous than Allie. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, think about sharing your faith, and I'm going to close with this in case he's going to, or I can, we've got a video coming up here in a minute, but uh, you know, pray. You know, you're going to leave here today, and, and uh, I believe that God's going to give you opportunity to talk to someone. Pray for courage to step into that, to just go there. And pray for confidence that the Lord's going to be working and has been working and will be working as you do. And, and honestly, guys, a lot of conversations are going to go to voicemail, okay? And that's okay. But, you know, some of those conversations might just lead to a lifelong, beautiful relationship with the Father. And you can be a part of that. Amen.